new trailer, new mon. Let's break them down, son. Lechonk. I read this as Lechonk over and over. I guess because Lechonk is too fun of a name for Pokemon, but the mad lads did it. But actually, lechon is Spanish for piglet, and it's also a really popular pork dish in Latin America and the Philippines. Both places Spain got, uh, involved with. So that's its name, but what is it? Well, it is pretty simple. It's the Black Iberian Pig. Remember, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet take place on the Iberian Peninsula, which today is Spain and Portugal, though, it's also got this light part under its eyes, which is most similar to the Red River Hog. Its official description states, Lechonk uses its sense of smell to find and eat only the most fragrant wild grasses and the richest berries. The Pokémon's body is mostly muscle, built by constantly walking around in search of food. So all in all, it's, it's a truffle pig, or truffle hog. Hogs trained to sniff and dig up truffles from the ground. They have to still be foraged because we haven't quite figured out how to properly farm them yet, though there are plenty of farms still. Really, it's just a bunch of forested land that they own and that they kind of cultivate. So this tradition is still around, even though it was invented all the way back in the 15th century. It's mostly done in France, Italy, and the Pacific Northwest, surprisingly enough, but Spain is no stranger to it. And the use of hogs is actually banned in Italy now because they are actually really bad for the mycelium in the ground. Dang conservationist future ruining our tradition. It will probably evolve into a ground type because, I mean, digging for truffles and the dirty dirt nose thing. You like. Chicharonk or something. Small olive, olive, oh, it's a small olive. We're two for two with the meme words. Uh, Pokemon traditionalists hate it, but the future is here. The alphas and zoomers have taken over. I love that an actual Spanish company tweeted about this. A plus to their marketing team. They got themselves a viral tweet. While olives are more traditionally seen as Greek and Italian, at least here in the US, they are actually just Mediterranean as a whole, and this region being the first Mediterranean region, yeah, you kinda have to have an olive. Olive cultivation started at least 6,000 years ago, 4,000 BC in Egypt, and even back then, people were refining them into their oils. We invented olive oil before we invented real writing. According to its official description, it stores oil in its upper olive head, and it will shoot this oil out, slowing its opponent down, and it can go for a week without eating or drinking. It prefers dry and sunny climates, which really, that's not anything special, that just means it's an olive. That's the kind of environment that olive trees love. Um, I'd love to see it evolve into some oiled up Olympian grass fighting type, or since it's so cowardly, maybe it can find peace when it evolves as extending an olive branch as a symbol for peace. Pommy. The Pikachu clone, maybe. Look at its heckin' fluffy feet! Mighty paws for sure, but what is the me in its name from? Salami? Certainly looks like it. Uh, but actually, all Pikachu clones have Japanese in their names, so it's simply Nezumi, Japanese for mouse. It is categorized as the mouse Pokemon, after all, even though it looks a bit more like a chinchilla with all that fluff. But they are from South America, which, again, though, Spain, uh, sort of has some history with. Uh, but the second animal that comes to mind is the Hazel Dormouse except they kind of live all over Europe, except the Iberian Peninsula. Though there is also the Garden Dormouse, which is super common across the whole peninsula, and it has the really tall ears. So I guess if we just say it's a Dormouse and mix the elements of the two, it's perfect. But it's still not the only possibility. Hmm, maybe its description can help us? Uh, it says, in addition to the electric sacs in its cheeks, Pommy has electricity discharging organs on its forepaws. It generates electricity by rubbing its cheeks, and then it shocks its opponents by touching them with the pads on its forepaws. Kind of like just static electricity, I guess. But looking at all of its fluff, it, it's like thick. So thick with fur. Its size to weight ratio is even more proof of that. It's, it's mostly fluff, which would be strange to have being in a place that's so hot like Spain. But there's also the Pyrenees. The Pyrenees mountain range in northeastern Spain is sort of what separates the Iberian Peninsula from the rest of Europe, and it's home to the Pyrenees Marmot. 
or it was anyway, before they killed them all. Uh, it's extinct now, but hey, past and future. And there are plenty other marmots in other parts of the world that are pretty stinking bright orange, just like Pommy. Oh, hey, but digging into it just a little bit more, great news, their future is bright. Recently, conservationists reintroduced marmots to the Pyrenees, and they are doing great. Wonderful. The culmination of past and future. Also, love this fan art from Ben Falstick on Twitter. It totally does have my hair, right? Plus, it's chunky. And then there's the legendaries, Koridon and Miraidon. Well, combine the Japanese words for past and future with Don, a suffix commonly used for dinosaurs, as it means tooth, but it's also pretty draconic sounding too, and also you can be the big Don of something. Also, when you put those words together like this, it sounds like ride on, because you ride on them. It's a retro motorcycle chopper and a hover bike past and future. They are both large fan-throated lizards, or brown anoles, or really there's several kinds of lizards that do this. These kinds of lizards live basically everywhere it's warm most of the year, and they famously, of course, have these large fans on their throats that grow really, really big, and they're even known to walk upright when they're trying to be intimidating and failing because they're too dang cute. So these Pokemon take that large fan and turn it into a tire or a hover balancing pad thingy. Like this, I've, I've seen this kind of design on other hovercrafts in media, like hoverboards and hover cars and such. But it does have literal jet thighs. <laughs> and you can see with Coridon, the head feathers move really, really high up, like the really tall handlebars on those stupid looking choppers. And they both have more normal handlebars coming from their shoulders. Notably, I guess motorcycles are pretty popular in Spain. MotoGP is there. In fact, MXGP, the motocross world championship, just ended in Madrid, and the last few of the world championships were held there. There's also F1 racing all over Europe, but Spain plays a big part in that too, because their weather is just so good for it. Miradon, then, has these pixelated eyes, and actual, like, hover jet thighs, again. <laughs> Um, but it, that, do, that does make me start to wonder if it's a man-made Pokémon. Perhaps something of a, we built this to be better than what's natural. And that of course leads to the conflict, the main conflict of the games. Also interesting that there are two professors, each exclusive to their own game, and even they are future and past themed. We got a Neolithic goddess and a 2077 Chad. I do like that they both have the short shaved sides head style and all that, because it's a style that, at least in media, is often associated with ancient Caucasians, from Vikings to Neanderthals. Meanwhile, Future Professor also has this style, because after countless millennia, the style is finally coming back. I say coming back as if it hasn't already been here for a decade, but yeah, it's popular again. But what are their names? Sada and Turo. It's Pasada and Futuro, Spanish for past and future. <laughs> you know, even, even Scarlet and Violet. While, yeah, along with the yellow, they make the three colors of the old Spanish flag, they also are the two ends of the color spectrum, ultraviolet and infrared, a deep red like Scarlet. And seeing as the color spectrum is also the light spectrum, in a way, you could see it as a metaphor for how far back we can see and how far forward we can see. There is no doubt in my mind that that is the theme of this game, and I'm fairly certain that there will be some machine or way to explain us getting the Hisuian Pokémon in here too, be it a way to trade from the past, which is already a thing if I'm remembering right, or there will be some machine or item that unlocks Pokémon genes, allowing them to evolve into a since-extinct form which, in a way, is using the technology of the future to bring back old tradition. There's a moral to the story, I don't know what it is yet though, but we'll know more when the game comes out, or just when more trailers happen. What do you think of all these new mom? This is just a brief look into them, it doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about them in more detail later. Because I will. You know me. That's what I do here. Subscribe.